Today on the Transplant Hope, we're going to be talking about the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation device, aka ECMO. Now, if you're not exactly sure what that is, go ahead and stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper again today. My name is Jim Merle, and let me apologize right out of the gate by telling you to an extent today, today's thumbnail on the front of this video was kind of clickbait. So my apologies for that. And I mean that because many of you saw this guy right here, Elmo, in the background. And even though you saw the letters E-C-M-O out beside it, maybe that didn't necessarily click. And I happen to be dyslexic. So for me, that would have fooled me every time. And I probably would have clicked on the video for no more reason than to say, what in the world is Jim talking about? Why is he talking about Elmo? Well, actually, we're not talking about Elmo at all. He's completely unrelated other than their names sound similar. That's just about where the parallels end. But today we are talking about ECMO or the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation device. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you as a heads up, if you've noticed a pattern forming, and it will be forming in the future, we're going to be talking a lot in the next few weeks about life-saving, life-supported type measures. We've already talked about the LVAD or the left ventricular assist device on another program. I'll have it up here in the corners as well as in the description below. If you're not exactly sure what an LVAD is or maybe you're facing being on an LVAD and you need the information they're laying out for you, that video was perfect. I think it was very informative as well as maybe an education device about the LVAD, whether or not you should use it, and mainly about the advances that have come about in LVAD, BIVAD, that sort of VAD type technology in the last few years. But today we're talking about the ECMO. Again, I'll say it one more time. It's difficult. It's a mouthful. But the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation device, if I got all that together. And it basically is a life-changing, life-supporting uh, measure that is oftentimes used when you're facing a heart and or a lung transplant or really anytime severe trauma occurs to either heart or lungs this device could be used and i've seen a lot of people have heart attacks and and different problems that happen where the oxygen is not being properly used in their body and the ecmo device is put in to help to give them a fighting chance. And we're going to be talking more about that in a moment. But nonetheless, if you ask me to summarize the ECMO in just a few short phrases, I would have to say it is blood exchanging, it is oxygenating, and it is life-saving. That's what ECMO is really all about. And so I think it's important that we know what we're talking about when we discuss ECMO. Because I'll be honest with you, when I first heard the term ECMO spoken to my face maybe six, eight years ago, I didn't have any idea what it was. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even concerned when the doctor used the term because I was so ignorant, if you will, or unlearned on what ECMO was. So I think for the transplant community as a whole, it's something that's very important. Now, if you've not experienced ECMO, you may be in that boat, not really understanding it. If you have experienced ECMO, then you know probably too much about it, if you will. We're going to try to balance that ball somewhere in the middle. Now, let's start out by talking about really what ECMO is and why and how it's used. In the first place, to think about what ECMO is, you really need to consider it as a measure of life support because that's basically what it rounds out to be. And the way that it works in a nutshell is that they're going to take two large cannulas or, if you will, uh, tubes and they're going to place them inside of your body generally speaking in the groin area or sometimes in the neck and if they do the neck i'll put a picture on the screen of a young lady who had it that way they're going to generally drape it up and over your head and that's really con for convenience sake it's really to help it to be a little bit less restricted but it doesn't matter they're trying to get into major veins major arteries in your body in order to do something such as or similar to not exactly but similar to what a heart bypass machine would do in an operating room. And if you know what a heart bypass machine is, we'll talk about that in depth a little bit later too. But basically, when you're taken in for open heart surgery or maybe some type of lung surgery that's very invasive, they will bypass your heart as in they're going to pull the blood out of your body, shoot it through a machine, allow the oxygen to be supplied, all the nutrients to be supplied, and pump it back into your body while your organs have stopped, while they paralyze them temporarily in surgery in order for you to continue to have life in spite of the fact those organs are stopped. Now, an ECMO is not exactly like that in that an ECMO is used while while your organs are still 
performing to the best of their ability the function they're meant to do. For the heart to be pumping blood, for the lungs to be using the oxygen that's brought into them by the heart and the bloodstream in order to have life. And they continue to work and they continue to work up to their level. But generally an ECMO is applied whenever those two organs or one of the other is not doing its job. When you're in heart failure or severe lung failure, that's when ECMOs are put on. And I'll, I'll tell you right up front, an ECMO can be a very, very, very scary thing. And I said three or four varies right there because I know that's the deal. Now, I haven't personally experienced it. I didn't have to go through that. I was blessed. But for those of you who have, in a sense, you may as well be blessed because you know how important this device was to your living life and surviving up until the point to even be watching this video. Maybe a family member has been through it, whatever. But nonetheless, again, it is a tremendously important device as far as saving our lives. Now, as the blood is taken out of those uh, arteries, those veins in the neck or in the groin, it's passed through a machine that's generally speaking, and this could vary a little bit by model, but generally it's about two foot by two foot square, stands about three foot high, and looks like it has a series of pumps in it because it does. But it draws the blood out of your body, passes it through the machine, removes through filtering systems as much carbon dioxide as it can, which carbon dioxide without oxygen will be extremely harmful to our body, but removes the carbon dioxide and then in change, interchanges that by pumping extra oxygen into the blood. Hence, taking the load, if you will, off of the heart and or the lungs so that you can continue to live in spite of the failure. Now, basically, when I think about an, uh, ECMO being used in that way, it can do a couple of different things. For one thing, it can be life restoring. And I have seen cases where people have actually gotten very, very ill, had a terrible heart failure, terrible lung failure, whatever, go into the hospital, spend a number of weeks or months on an ECMO, and then almost miraculously get up out of the bed, walk out of the hospital under their own power. Why? Because the ECMO has restored their body or allowed their body to be revitalized to the point that those organs regained, as to a certain extent at least, much in some cases of their function. And so basically in that case, I would say it allows the body to rest. And that's probably the biggest thing an ECMO is capable of doing is allowing your body to rest. Now, will that rest just be or will that restoration just be for the purpose of getting you kind of like the LVAD did as a bridge to transplant so the transplant can eventually come or whether it be the fact that as I've said, some people just, they get better, they walk out. Both cases can be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Scary, yes. Very, very scary, yes, but very important. Now, here's probably the biggest complaint if there is one, and there's usually not too many after ECMO. It's just when you face it. Probably the biggest complaint to ECMO is, is the restrictions that come with it. And the restriction is, unlike the LVAD and a few other devices that could be implanted to deserve similar purposes, heart function-wise at least, unlike those other devices, you will not be going home on an ECMO. When you're on an ECMO device, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation device, I said it one more time, maybe that's it, um, it is going to keep you in the hospital. And for the most part, keep you in the bed while you're on it, especially if they've chosen or maybe because of the, the choices they had to have to put that in through your groin. Now, if they put the ECMO in your groin area, attaching it to those large arteries and stuff, you're basically going to be bedridden. Now, you may, like a friend of mine, Olivia Hollis, was able to do and several others during that time, you may have the opportunity to, to stand uh, very carefully, very gingerly, to stand at your bedside or sit up in a chair but more times than not, they're going to have to allow you to stay very, very still because you don't need those large. And they're, I mean, they're bigger than your thumbs, both of them. You don't need those large cannulas getting out of place or being pulled because this is the lifeline to your main arteries, your main point of your bloodstream, those great vessels and stuff. So you have to have it in place. Now, if they choose, like the picture a moment ago, if they choose to drape that over your head and attach it to your neck, that offers a little bit of freedom. And I'll admit to you, before about a 
few weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, until I was introduced via Facebook to Camille Freed, which I've already done a shout out on. You really need to go back and check her out. Find her Facebook page, check her out. Until I was basically introduced to Camille Freed, I thought of ECMO as a very, very, very restricted device. But actually, if they put it in your neck, which is a little bit more for convenience, provided you're careful, you can actually get up and move around a bit. And that'll be totally by the judgment of your team, totally by your body's ability to do so. But if ECMO's doing what it's supposed to do, giving that extra oxygen to your to your heart, to your lungs, allowing it to work, you may have the energy to do that. And Camille, for example, find this on her Facebook page, and I won't say anything else about it, but you can actually find videos of Camille riding an exercise bike for miles and miles while on ECMO. And that's just tremendous. That is amazing. And Camille, if you've seen this video, congratulations on being able to do that. And congratulations on finally receiving your heart and lung transplant. Huge shout out to you again. But nonetheless, that has nothing to do with this. It can sometimes be very restrictive. One, because you're in the hospital, you cannot go home. Another, because depending on where they have to place the cannulas, you may very well be bedridden. And in any case, you've got to be very, very cautious. So what does it do? It basically oxygenates your blood, removes the carbon dioxide through the pump system, and allows your heart and or your lungs to be either relieved of the stress or restored in some cases. It is a bridge hopefully in many cases to transplant or to the house <laughs> to get to go home. That's what ECMO is all about. Now, I could go into much more technical things about the device, but I think that would bore you. That's not what the transplant helper is about. I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, that's my disclaimer every time. I don't know that much about the device other than the experiences I've had from being around it, being from tho around those who have had it, and from doing a little bit of research. But the ECMO is a wonderful, wonderful device in most cases when it is able to do its job. I hope this program's helped you out in some way, maybe to give you a little bit of understanding about ECMO, maybe to allow you to kind of be thinking things through because the truth is many of us who are waiting for transplant could eventually face this device and albeit it'll be scary and, and admittedly dangerous, it can really do a lot to help to save your life. So if this has helped you out in some way, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up on the program. Consider subscribing to this program. You can hit the subscribe button beneath the video, maybe even the bell notification off beside that. It's hopefully I can continue to provide you with content which will advocate, educate, and even motivate you as a transplant patient. But until next time, please stay stronger, friends. 